Hey yo, everyone. The superhero genre has never been more popular than what it is today, with dozens and dozens of movies and TV shows perpetually being announced. Even with all the massive success that this genre has seen, we haven't seen it grow as explosively in the video game market. Yes, there are a handful of really great superhero games out there, and we do have quite a few currently in the works, but I feel as if there is still a lot more room to grow. I don't know, video games and superheroes just feel like a perfect blend to me, you know? You get to live out your dream of being the hero that you adore so much. So today, I've made a list of 10 superheroes that deserve their own game, and I even went as far as to try and figure out what studio would be best equipped to bring these characters into the gaming world. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Alright, let's get it. Alrighty, before we begin, a quick disclaimer. I'm trying to make this list as reasonable as possible. That means that I'm not going to include characters who are currently getting a game made, such as Blade, Wolverine, Captain America, Wonder Woman, and Invincible. On top of that, I'm trying to match these heroes up with studios that I think would not only be a good fit, but could actually have the bandwidth to pick up the project. So that means no Insomniac on this list. Even though I think they would be a great fit for multiple selections on this list, they've got their hands full at the moment with Wolverine and Spider-Man. Anyway, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this thing. So at number 10, let's go with what is probably the most obvious fit, a Thor game being produced by Santa Monica Studio. The team behind the God of War series feels like the obvious choice to make a game about another god set in Norse mythology who also has a magically loyal melee weapon. With the last two entries focusing heavily on Norse mythology and even containing their own interpretation of Asgard and the gods, I think that Santa Monica could use a lot of their experience to make a Thor game that really just blows us all away. Clearly, they understand the mythos, they've nailed what would be the hammer fighting mechanics, and they just get how to make a good game that features a ridiculously overpowered protagonist. My only concern, I guess, would be whether or not they want to actually make this game. They spent the last decade solely focused on Norse mythology, and I'm just not sure they want to spend another 3-4 to four years being locked into these same parameters. Maybe they just want to focus on the next God of War game, I don't know. All I'm saying is, if someone is going to make a Thor game that isn't Santa Monica, at least ask them if you can borrow their axe mechanics. Now at number 9, I think that there is a ton of potential in a Green Arrow title developed by Guerrilla Games. These are the devs behind the Horizon Zero Dawn and Forbidden West games, and if you've played them, you know why I think they would be a great fit for Green Arrow. In the Horizon games, Aloy is this masterful hunter who is especially skilled with a bow and arrow. Now picture this. Year 1, Green Arrow. You get to play as Oliver Queen as he ends up shipwrecked on a hostile island with nothing but a bow and arrow. In the comics, one of his origin stories is that his best friend shoots him off a boat so that he can embezzle money from Oliver's company. Of course, Oliver survives, but he ends up on this isolated island that is actually ran by a massive drug cartel. I mean, come on. This just, it sounds like it was destined to be made into a video game, doesn't it? As you level up and explore the open world island, you can unlock new abilities and gadgets. After all, Green Arrow is basically Batman, but instead of a utility belt, he has a quiver full of all types of crazy different arrows. I think that a year one Green Arrow story would do incredibly well, from us seeing Oliver Queen as this rich, douchey thrill seeker to being humbled and forced to adapt in order to survive. And then imagine a sequel where it takes place back home in Star City where he can use his bow and arrow and zip lines for some unreal vigilante traversal. God, I need this to become a franchise ASAP. Down at number 8, I want to see Hazel Light Studios make a TMNT game. This one is a bit of a rule breaker because there technically is a TMNT game currently being produced by THQ Nordic following the last Ronin storyline, but I'm not counting that. If you're going to give us a TMNT game, you gotta let us play as all of the turtles, not just one, which is what happens in The Last Ronin. Although I am excited for that game, plus the Last Ronin story is really great. But back to Hazelite. This studio has been on a tear lately with great co-op games. A Way Out is a gritty, morally gray prison break story, while It Takes Two is a bit more lighthearted, but certainly emotional game of the year winner. Clearly, the studio has perfected their craft of making thought-provoking, fun co-op games. They won Game of the Year. I'd say that's a crowning achievement if I've ever seen one. So what's next for them? 
how about taking the next step and going from two player stories to a fully fleshed out four player experience? One where each player can control one of the four turtles, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo. Each turtle would have their own gameplay style and different mechanics based on their choice of weapons. Not to mention that each of the turtles has their own very distinct personality, so you could throw in some great missions where, let's say, Donnie has to solve some sort of technical problem while the other three turtles fight off some of Shredder's goons or something. I don't know, clearly I'm not a game dev here, but I really think that Hazel Light can make something incredible with the Ninja Turtles. But the most important part, and I know some people will disagree with me on this, and I get it, the game needs to be a 4 player co-op always. Just like A Way Out and It Takes Two, this TMNT game has to have 4 players in order to be playable. I just think that when you build a game with that objective in mind, you know exactly how to structure your levels and balance out the gameplay. You don't have to plan around some people only having two or three players. You know that if they're going to play, they're going to have to follow the path that you laid out for them with all four players getting involved, you know? Hopefully that makes sense. I just think that this studio is more than capable of making a fun TMNT game that still has some heart to it. A four person co-op adventure with these characters sounds like a dream come true. Moving along to number seven, how do you guys feel about a Black Widow game? On the surface level, there isn't really too much that really makes Black Widow that distinctive of a character. Honestly, that new Perfect Dark game looks like a spiritual interpretation of Black Widow anyway. That's why I think a Black Widow game made by Iron Monkey Studios would go bananas. Pun intended. If you didn't know, Iron Monkey Studios, now called Fire Monkeys, is the studio behind the Mirror's Edge franchise. In those games, you play as this rebel slash criminal who parkours all over the city, evading government officials. These games had some of the best parkour that I've ever played, even today, eight years since the last entry. The movement was so smooth and it made you feel incredibly badass. Unfortunately, the combat and story weren't too great, which really put a damper on the series, but I think it's been long enough now where I think we should give these guys another shot. Can you imagine a Black Widow game where Natasha is on some espionage mission deep in enemy territory? Imagine that her cover gets blown for whatever reason and now she has to fight and run her way out of the city. Like, what if they made this a tie-in to the MCU? What if this is the Budapest story that she's always talking to Hawkeye about? This would be the perfect entry point for an MCU video game crossover. Not super necessary for the casual moviegoers, but a great experience for the hardcore fans. If you figure out the combat and get a group of competent writers, this feels like the perfect setting for a Black Widow title. Yeah, I guess Black Widow isn't exactly known for her parkour abilities, but that doesn't really matter. This would make for a fun video game, which is ultimately all that matters anyway. God, I would freaking love a spy thriller built with Mirror's Edge gameplay. Let's make it happen, Marvel. At number six, I think it's time we get an Ant-Man game. At first, I was thinking that Obsidian should make this because of their work on Grounded, but I eventually came around to liking Eidos Montreal better for my specific vision of this game. Obviously, Obsidian has nailed that feeling of being shrunk down and dealing with big ants and household items and whatever else is going on in Grounded, but I think that Eidos Montreal can really make the most out of an Ant-Man game. The reason why I like them a bit more than Obsidian is because I think that they already have the perfect blueprint for how this game should play out. So a few years ago, Eidos Montreal made a highly underrated Guardians of the Galaxy game. Seriously, one of my favorite games from the past five years. It does not get the love it deserves. Anyway, in the game, you only play as Star-Lord, but you can still dish out commands to the other Guardians to solve environmental puzzles or help take down a boss. Here's what I'm thinking. Use those same mechanics before an Ant-Man game. While you're normal sized, you just play as Scott Lang and can fight enemies in typical video game combat, however they want to do it. But when you're shrunk down, you can call upon the ants to help you with traversal or solve puzzles or fight unconventional enemies like a big rat or something. I'm not sure how they'd pull off switching from human to ant size, like if that would be something that is locked into the level at specific moments or if it is decided by the player to do it their own choosing. But I'm pretty confident that Eidos Montreal could come up with a great story with engaging gameplay. Plus, I just think that these guys deserve another shot because Guardians of the Galaxy did not deserve to flop the way it did. Now number 5, a bit of a controversial pick, but I really want Rocksteady to make a Superman game. I know some people want them to go back to Batman and I understand, those games are great and no one else is really making good Batman games right now. 
I also love the idea of Rocksteady maybe making a Daredevil gang, because I don't know who I would want over them to make one, not even Insomniac. But that's pretty unlikely to happen since Rocksteady is owned by Warner Brothers, who of course owns DC, and I don't think Marvel is going to lend out their IP to their biggest competitor. Which is why we need a Superman game. It has been so long since we've had a competent Superman title. After the atrocity that was the Suicide Squad kills the Justice League, I think that Rocksteady realizes that they need to win back the public's favor. Yes, they could go back to Batman, but personally, I don't think they want to yet. They've been making those games for years, and I think Suicide Squad was their chance to try something new and exciting before the big heads forced them to throw in microtransactions and make it the worst thing possible. So why not give Superman a go? There was a rumor a while back that Rocksteady was working on a Superman game before they canned it and started working on Suicide Squad. The rumor was that the Metropolis we see in the Suicide Squad is what was originally intended for their Superman game. However, Jason Schreier, one of the best video game reporters out there, came out and debunked this theory almost immediately. I guess Rocksteady never had any plans to work on a Superman game and never even pitched one. But I think we should change that. Superman, contrary to popular belief, is a very nuanced character. The gameplay would have to feature a very delicate balance of being the strongest character in the world while somehow still having challenging combat with actual stakes and consequences. I'm not sure how they'd do it, but I have faith that Rocksteady could pull this off. I think they have a firm grasp on the DC Universe and could really make something special if they're allowed to return to their single player roots. Superman and Rocksteady could both use a comeback, so what the hell. Why not, right? Down to number 4, we absolutely need a Moon Knight game developed by Sucker Punch. God, Sony, if you're not going to announce a Ghost of Tsushima sequel soon, then please come out and surprise us all with a Moon Knight reveal. Imagine Sucker Punch building out an open world set in modern day Egypt, where we play as a Moon Knight who is constantly struggling with his multiple personalities. Different missions could have different alter egos take over, granting different abilities and skill sets. The potential for mind-bending storytelling here is just through the roof. And I think that the Ghost of Tsushima gameplay would translate very well into a Moon Knight game. A lot of people like Moon Knight and his aesthetic, but the character hasn't really had that much screen time despite its popularity. The TV show was fine, but I think a video game could really flesh out the character in a way no other medium can. Characters like Bushman and Kanchu really need to shine. Plus, you can throw in some iconic crossovers like Bullseye or Werewolf by Night. Moon Knight just seems like too perfect of a video game character to not have a fully realized AAA title by now. Now at number 3, I've thrown in a different type of game here. I think that Slow Clap should make an Iron Fist game. Slow Clap, the developers of the acclaimed fighting game Sifu, would absolutely crush an Iron Fist game. Danny Rand is one of those Marvel characters that doesn't really get the credit he deserves. This dude is supposed to be THE martial arts master, a literal living weapon. Iron Fist has went toe to toe and even defeated Captain America, Black Panther, Wolverine, Daredevil, Colossus, Nightcrawler, and even Spider-Man. The dude's abilities make it sound like he was built to be a video game character. Peak human stamina, peak human agility, peak human conditioning, master acrobat, he's got it all. Clearly, the dude can fight. Now let's throw this character into the Sifu mechanics and watch the money just start printing itself. Iron Fist is a hero that is basically the peak of human performance mixed in with a bit of magic called Chi. With his Chi augmentation ability, Iron Fist can use what I guess I would call special moves like having Chi enhanced speed, Chi enhanced reflexes, Chi enhanced durability, and Chi enhanced healing. I mean, come on guys. Out of all of the characters on this list, Iron Fist feels like the one best equipped for the video game genre. I really think the Sifu devs could cook with this one, especially if we threw in some other popular street level characters for him to interact with, like a Luke Cage or a Daredevil. Like I said, this guy doesn't get enough love, and I think the talented devs at Slow Clap could show the world just how cool Iron Fist can be. Down to number 2, we absolutely need Naughty Dog to make a Punisher game. I mean, come on. I've seen this combo thrown out for a while now, and it just makes too much sense. The gritty, brutal combat of The Last of Us games combined with the Punisher's absolute disregard for human life can make one of the best M-rated action games we've ever seen. The Punisher is supposed to be this just absolute killing machine, extremely deadly and driven by a rageful revenge. 
God, just imagine a Punisher game with the updated mechanics from The Last of Us, along with the a storytelling that we know Naughty Dog is capable of. I mean, these Last of Us games are insanely detailed to the point where killing enemies feels actually kind of psychotic at times. You don't have to do this. Please. Yes. Plus, the world that Naughty Dog created feels grimy and brutal and raw and desperate. I could easily see the Punisher fitting into a world like this. Like I said, I don't know what Naughty Dog has planned after what I presume is The Last of Us Part 3, but if they want to head up a new franchise, I think they should be first in line for the Punisher IP. Okay, before I wrap it up with number one, I have two honorable mentions. The first one, a new Mutants game made by Arcane. Right now, they're working on that new Blade game, so they're pretty tied up at the moment, but could you imagine an X-Men or New Mutants title from the creators of Dishonored and Deathloop? These guys clearly have an understanding of multiple gameplay mechanics, and I think could pretty seamlessly implement these for different mutants. A game that features the gameplay variety of Dishonored, but allotted to different characters, a la Nightcrawler, Iceman, Gambit, Jubilee, or really any other mutants they wanted. It's perfect, man. And then the other honorable mention, a Deadpool game made by Tango Gameworks. Sadly, this one will never happen because Xbox shut down Tango earlier this year, despite the fact that they made one of the best games I think I've ever played in Hi-Fi Rush. I just think that this art style and comedic writing from Hi-Fi Rush would have translated over perfectly to a Deadpool game. It's a shame we'll never see it. But down to number one, the best combo I can think of a John Constantine game developed by Remedy Entertainment. My goodness, this announcement would break the gaming community. Constantine is one of the coolest DC characters out there, essentially being a badass Sherlock Holmes who fights demons and monsters. He's named the Hellblazer for a reason. Similar to Doctor Strange, Constantine is a master of mystical arts, although he mostly acts as this foul mouthed detective who is incredibly cunning and tragically addicted to chain smoking. He's a very complicated character with even more complicated storylines, but if anyone knows how to work with complicated narratives, it's Remedy. Picture a game where the player has the mysterious powers from Control, yet they live in a world that is similar to that of Alan Wake. That's what a Constantine game should be. Solving puzzles, fighting mythical creatures, wielding magic. Out of all the games on this list, this one, by far, is the one I want to see the most. If I were Warner Brothers or DC, I'm calling up Remedy and saying, here's a blank check, let's get this done. And who knows, maybe it will. The new head of DC, James Gunn, said that he wants everything to be tied into a unified story, whether it be movies, animated TV shows, or video games. Ambitious, I know, but if you're gonna do it, you might as well hire the best talent for the job. And that's my list. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts on this list? What other studios do you think should take a crack at the superhero genre? Would you swap out any of these entries for something else? Like maybe a Flash game made by Rocksteady or a Green Arrow game made by the Far Cry devs? Honestly, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot. I appreciate you guys as always, and I'll catch you in the next one.